What's up, everyone? Welcome to the NBA Daily Podcast, your home for useless news about the NBA. My name is Dawson Shine, and I'm your host. And before we begin today, I just want to give you a little bit of explanation as to why the show hasn't really been every day as it usually was. The main reason for that is because in real life, I've been moving, so I have to pack all of my stuff and get ready to move, which causes a lot of um, difficulty finding time to record every single day. Also, with the NBA playoffs starting to slow down with only games every other day sometimes, or only a couple of games for you know during an entire week, it makes it difficult to find topics to talk about every single day, and it's a little easier to just do it every other day and give you a good rundown of the games. So, enough about that. We're going to get started today talking about the huge game on Thursday between the Oklahoma City Thunder and the San Antonio Spurs, Game 6 of the Western Conference Semifinals. Oklahoma City crushed the Spurs at home, 113-99, to to win the series 4-2, just as I thought they were going to do back on the last episode. And the Thunder in this game were incredible. They started off down by up to 6 points by the San Antonio Spurs in the first quarter, but then the Thunder went on a huge run at the end of the half in order to go up 55-31 to at the half. They were up by 24 points, almost doubling the Spurs. But it was all because of momentum, especially late in the second quarter, when Russell Westbrook hit a huge three-pointer that got the crowd into it, putting the Thunder up 47-29, and then Durant hit a three with 2.3 seconds left to get the lead all the way up to 24. They kept their foot on the pedal the entire game, having a lead all the way up to 91-65 to at the end of the third quarter. Going into the fourth quarter, the Spurs were down 26 points. Now, of course, the Spurs are a veteran team. They don't quit until that final buzzer sounds. They made a really good run in the fourth quarter, a fourth quarter in which Tim Duncan played all 12 minutes, and that'll be talked about a little later on in the show. But the Spurs made a huge run in the fourth quarter and got the game all the way down to an 11-point lead with about three and a half minutes to go. But then Westbrook decided he wanted to end the game right there, hitting a huge three followed by a driving layup, basically clinching the game and killing all momentum the Spurs had which was huge because momentum is what gave this game to the Thunder. They kept their foot on the pedal and continued to execute all throughout the game, especially on the boards, which is what they've done the entire series. There's a reason that they led rebounding categories in five of the six games. They won the rebounding battle in this game, 50-40, to including 14 offensive rebounds. And obviously the offensive rebounds are huge for second chance points, but the 36 defensive rebounds aren't the whole story. These rebounds are also mainly by the guards, especially Russell Westbrook, who likes to get the rebound and push it up the court to get an easy layup while the opposing team, the Spurs, or any other team, is not defensively set yet. And he did that multiple times last night, and it's one of the reasons why the fast break points were 21 points for the Thunder, 5 points for the Spurs. That's a huge disparity, and that was mainly due to the rebounding abilities by the Thunder. Also, of course, you have to talk about the Stars when you talk about the Thunder, You have Kevin Durant, who had a huge game, 37 points, 12 of 24 shooting, incredibly efficient, 12 free throws. He had 9 rebounds, 2 assists as well. Great game. Also, Russell Westbrook. He went out there and he played like Russell Westbrook needs to play. He was 10 of 21 from the field, 2 of 6 from 3, but those two threes were huge in this game for momentum. He had 28 points, 12 assists, 3 rebounds. He did have 6 turnovers, but obviously... Uh, A couple of those turns were in the fourth quarter when the lead was already too far gone and really didn't make too much of a difference. And also, Steven Adams had another amazing game. 15 points, 11 rebounds, another double-double in this series. He's turning into a huge component to their offense, especially offensive rebounding, of which he had five. And finally, a key contributor that absolutely no one expected in this game for the Thunder, Andre Roberson. He was a hero in this game because he had not hit a three in the entire five games of the series prior to this, and also didn't hit a three against the Mavericks in the last series for the Thunder. But last night, three for five from three, five for eight from the field, he had 15 points, excuse me, 14 points, two blocks, a steal, seven rebounds, including three offensive rebounds as a starting shooting guard. Incredible effort from him. The shooting was the contribution they were hoping for all year, and he finally showed up in this game. Obviously, he's out there mainly for his defensive abilities, but if he can contribute on the offensive end while shooting threes in the corner, 
That's huge because he is constantly left wide open so the other guard can help on Russell Westbrook driving. All Russell Westbrook has to do if Andre Roberson's in the corner is drive into the paint, kick it out, he can take the three and try and make it. And last night, he was making them, and that was huge. On the other side of the ball, the San Antonio Spurs. They did not have a great game overall. LaMarcus Aldridge had a good one, 9 for 18. He had 18 points and 14 rebounds. That's all right, but he really didn't play that great on the defensive end, especially boxing out. Also, Kawhi Leonard was 9 of 23, poor shooting night. 22 points and 3 steals, however, which is very good. And then Tim Duncan was 7 of 14 for 19 points, but with most of his points coming in the fourth quarter when it was already too late. You see, this might have been Tim Duncan's final game as a San Antonio Spurs. And obviously, he might go down as the greatest power forward to ever play this game, if not guaranteed to go down as such. And last night might have been the last time he ever played. That's pretty crazy to think about, to be honest. He's been a staple of the NBA since the 90s. He's won five championships. He's, he's had so many deep runs in the playoffs. Memorable moments, his three against the Phoenix Suns way back in 2003, his domination of the finals in 2003, 2012 with the heartbreaker against the Heat, followed by 2013's chase to get back and get revenge. Incredible playoff stories and incredible playoff career and regular season career. And he might have just had the quietest end of a career ever. Kobe Bryant, obviously this season, had his little world tour, his retirement tour, we'll say. But Tim Duncan might have just gone out with a little bit of a wave to the crowd and a strong fourth quarter, and that was it. And that's really what we would have expected from Tim Duncan, because he was never known for his outgoing personality or his crowd motivation or anything like that. He was a quiet leader for the Spurs, and that's how he went out. He played all 12 minutes in the fourth quarter, which may have been due to the fact that he might not play again. He hasn't given any indication as to what his decision will be, but most people feel like he might be retiring. And I agree, mainly due to the fact that he didn't look like he could really play too much anymore, especially a whole nother year of this grinding out, playing 82 games plus the playoffs. I don't think he'll be able to do it, unless he wants to come back as some bench capacity where he only plays 15, 20 minutes a game. And I don't know if you want to see a legend do that. No matter what, though, it's amazing to watch a legend play and watch him retire. Great season by him. Spurs had one of the best seasons ever in their history, the regular season, with 67 wins. But they fall short because the Thunder are just unstoppable when their two best players are on. So the Thunder are now facing the Golden State Warriors in the next round, and that's exciting because I cannot wait to see if the Thunder can actually hang with them with the help of their two top five NBA players, Durant and Westbrook. Moving on to the next series, the semifinals in the Eastern Conference between the Miami Heat and the Toronto Raptors. Game 6 was in Miami, and the Heat beat the Raptors 103-91 to force a Game 7 today at 3.30 Eastern. And this game was interesting beyond belief, really. The Miami Heat didn't divulge their starting lineup until only a few hours before the game. One of the main reasons for that was how interesting and different their lineup was. With the lack of starting center Hassan Whiteside, Spolstra and the Miami Heat decided to go in a hyper-small lineup. A lineup I haven't ever seen from them before, obviously, because of desperation. Goran Dragic, Dwayne Wade, Joe Johnson, Luol Deng, and Justice Winslow, the rookie. They started, and Luol Deng was actually the center. He did the tip-off and guarded the center most of the game. But really, it was interesting due to the fact that they played what they used to play when LeBron James was there. Positionless basketball. They guarded anyone on the court whenever they needed to, and they didn't really worry about the height differentials. Mainly due to the fact that the largest player they played was Josh McRoberts at 6'10". The average height was actually under 6'6 for the eight players the Miami Heat played. That's crazy. And you gotta give credit to Justice Winslow, who was a rookie who didn't even play in Game 3, but made his first career start in the playoffs last night. Game six in the playoffs, your team calls on you on an elimination night and tells you you gotta go and guard the opposing center, bring the ball up, shoot threes, all of that kind of stuff in one game. That's pretty difficult to do, and he did it. And I wasn't joking when I said guard the center, because at one point in a minute long stretch, he guarded Bismack Biombo in the paint, he brought the ball up on offense, and then hit a corner three. That's crazy. 
And after the game, he actually gave a little quote saying, that's what we lift weights for. Pretty smart quote and pretty great player, to be honest, to come up that huge in the playoffs. This hyper-small lineup was very key in actually beating the Toronto Raptors. Miami Heat held the lead for almost the entire game, with it getting as large as 15 points, and the Raptors never really made a comeback in the third and fourth quarters to make it interesting. It was pretty much above 10 points for the entire game. Obviously, the Raptors did try their best, and Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan actually had pretty good games by their standards. Kyle Lowry was 12 of 27, 3 of 5 from 3. He had 36 points, 3 assists, 4 rebounds. Great game. DeMar DeRozan had 23 points on 21 shots, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, and a steal. Those are great games by both of them. But the main problem was the other players for the Toronto Raptors, who did not shoot well at all, combining for 14 of 34 and only 32 points. Kyle Lowry outscored the rest of his teammates, except for DeMar DeRozan, by four points on his own. That's not good. You can't afford to have that in the playoffs. That's nine players combining for less points than your top scorer. That really can't happen when you're in a game six trying to close out a series and go to the conference finals for the first time in Raptors history. But unfortunately, they couldn't do it. Bismack Biombo didn't have as good of a game as he did in game five when they got the 3-2 series lead. He had 13 rebounds, only four points on one made shot. That's not good. Also, Corey Joseph off the bench, three for nine from the field, only seven points. They tried a bunch of different lineups in this game, playing 11 players, which they don't normally do, especially in the playoffs, 11 deep is pretty rare, but they just couldn't stop the combination of players from the Miami Heat, and they definitely couldn't stop Goran Dragic. 12 for 21 from the field, 30 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists. Great game. He was a plus 25 in this game. No one else was above plus 11 for the Heat. He was key to this win. And of course, Dwayne Wade. 8 of 21 from the field, not great shooting necessarily, but 22 points and 5 assists. He had 3 blocks in this game. That was the game high for both teams. And he's a shooting guard. But we also know that he is the best blocking guard in NBA history. So, not too much of a surprise. But overall in this game, it was interesting because of this hyper small lineup from the Miami Heat. It helped stave off elimination for one more game setting up an awesome Game 7 against these two teams that I cannot wait to watch today. It's going to be very entertaining, and we're going to have to see if Dwayne Casey and the Raptors can actually figure out a way to stop or just slow down the Miami Heat small lineup and try and take advantage. They need to use their bigs, or who's ever left, especially Bismack Biombo, to try and go in the paint and get dunks, get nice post moves, something in the paint that can actually take advantage of the very small lineup of the Heat. We'll see if the Heat can continue their dominance with this lineup, or if the Raptors can actually respond. My prediction is that the Raptors will actually be able to stop this lineup by taking advantage of Bismack Biombo in a high pick and roll with DeMar DeRozan. We'll see, but that's what my prediction is, and I think the Raptors will win this game 94-89 Game 7 victory to go into the conference finals for the first time in their history. But if you guys have any differing opinions, let me know in the comments. Let me know your reactions from the game later on when it actually plays out. And we'll get back to it tomorrow to talk about Game 7. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this NBA podcast. Can't wait to talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.